Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm excited because today I'm trying a brand new product for the very first time. We're gonna try out watercolor sticks. I've heard good things about these. In fact, I know Daniel Smith because they just make incredible products, carries a whole line of 50 colors. And so I went ahead and ordered five different colors from the Blick website. I ordered Organic Vermilion, Ultramarine, Burnt Sienna, Nickel Azo Yellow. I remembered this color from the Jean Haynes set that I'd reviewed and absolutely fell in love with this yellow. And then I'm trying Sodalite Genuine it's a Prima Tech color, so granulating, I suspect. And I'm just excited to try these. So I do have kind of a set of primaries here, a red, a blue, a yellow, and a mixer, and then a dark. So let's talk about pricing for watercolor sticks. When I ordered these from the Blick website, they were $9.01 each. The sticks are three inches long by a half inch wide. They came in a box completely protected with foam padding, as you can see. And then I went ahead and ordered a plastic storage case with it, which was also on the website. This was $3.70. So altogether, I spent just under $50 for five colors and a storage case. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, but if you compare the price of the sticks to the 15 milliliter tubes, the tubes are always going to be more expensive. In fact, I was looking at the price list again for the tubes, and they average anywhere from $10 to $14 a piece. And you can actually get about the same amount of paint from a tube as from these sticks. And the sticks, because you can use the entire thing, and re just remove the paper, there's very little waste. So that's an idea I'm already attracted to just with these sticks. Now, as I was browsing the reviews on the website, pretty much all good reviews, very few bad reviews. Everyone says the quality is good, the color is super intense, just like what you would expect from Daniel Smith paints. A lot of people are enjoying the fact that they're a lot cheaper than the tubes and you can cut them in pieces and refill half pans. I've seen several YouTubers do this as well where you can actually slice them and put them in half pans. We'll try that today. So I'll show you some of the photos that reviewers have posted. A lot of them have done abstract work where they actually hold them like a pastel or like a stick and just draw with a watercolor stick. And then a lot of people are just using them to fill their half pans and then reactivating them with a wet brush just like any other watercolor paint. Yeah, so I like this little plastic case. I guess you can take them apart. I'm not sure why you would do that. I tend to like things kept together. So I'm just gonna move these over to the case and we can set that aside. And then I'm gonna do a painting today using just the sticks. So I'm gonna use this Stonehenge Aqua Cold Pressed Heavy Watercolor Paper. The wonderful thing about watercolor paper blocks is that the sides are glued down everywhere except for one little small section right here at the top, which you can actually just stick a little palette knife in there to separate the paper or a credit card would even work. And that's how you gently slide the papers apart. But yeah, the wonderful advantage to having a block is that your paper is not gonna warp and buckle when it's wet. All right, so let's check out these colors. Probably the first thing we should do is swatch them and just see what they look like side by side and maybe even create a few mixes with them. For my swatches, I just have a scrap piece of Arches 140 pound cold pressed paper. That'll work great. And I'm gonna start with my yellow. So, you know, there's a couple different ways you could do this. I think what I'll do is, since it's a stick, this is super handy, you can just draw onto the paper. So let's just take our nickel azel yellow and draw a line. You can press down firmly so that a bunch of pigment comes off. All right. And then we'll take our brush, dip it in the water, remove, ooh, my brush is dirty. So take your wet brush and, ooh, that activates beautifully. And you can create a lovely swatch. Looks just like the tube paint, honestly, same exact color. So let's try the organic vermilion next. This is a new color for me. I don't actually have this one in a tube. You do have to press fairly firmly to get an, a good amount of pigment on the paper, but I imagine if you start with wet paper, that works a little easier. We'll just take our wet brush and activate it. Gorgeous warm red. And then let's do our burnt sienna next. A staple on my palette, I always have burnt sienna on every palette I take with me. It's kind of a necessary color for all the things I love to paint. The pigment number, of course, is PBR7. Yeah, it's reactivating just a little differently. It feels a little more dry, which is natural considering it's a dry media the way it's packaged like this. So with the burnt skin, I do feel like I'd have to press down pretty hard to get more color. Let's see what happens if we take the stick and apply it to the wet paper. Yeah, that actually goes on, glides on smoothly, and it's allowing me to release a little more paint that way. I know when I was reading through the reviews on the website, a lot of people who use these sticks just take their brush and dip directly on the stick like this. 
So let's try that with this next swatch. Let's do that with our ultramarine. We're just going to pick up a little bit from the tip of the ultramarine stick. Works great. Yeah. Reactivates just like a pan paint would super easily. That's my gorgeous warm blue. And then let's try our very last color. This is Sodalite Genuine. I'm going to do this the same way since that works so well. Just grab the paint from the tip of the stick. Yeah, and this is like this beautiful slate gray color almost. I think that'll be gorgeous for rocks. I love painting rocks. Okay, so those are my five colors. I just want to see what kind of secondaries I can get from this combination of colors. So let's combine our red and our yellow. Whenever you're mixing two colors, it's good to start with your lighter color. So we'll start with our yellow and I'm just going to put it right here on the paper and then I'll grab some red and then put that right over the top of the yellow. So we'll mix them directly on the paper. Gorgeous carrot orange we're getting from those two colors. Now let's try combining our yellow and our blue. So we'll start with the yellow. Gosh, I love this yellow so much. And then grab a little bit of the ultramarine, painting that over the top. It's a pretty earthy green we're gonna get from this. I really like that though. It's a beautiful color for painting landscapes. Most of the greens you see in nature are not gonna be jungle green necessarily. So I really like those secondaries. Let's see what happens when we mix the red and the blue. This actually works a lot better, I think, honestly, just taking your brush and dabbing it on the tip of your stick versus applying your stick to the paper first. Okay, so this is the ultramarine mixed with the organic vermilion, and that's the purple we're getting. That's really pretty. All right, so you can already begin to see, we can probably create quite a wide array of colors just from these five. Didn't mix the burnt sienna or sodalite with anything. As you know, if you mix burnt sienna with ultramarine, you can get any range of chocolate browns all the way to slate grays. Really beautiful combinations with those two. That's why I got those. The next thing I'd like to do is cut off just a little bit of each stick and put them in a half pan. Okay, I've got my knife. Ooh, here we go. Let's take this one first. Just going to peel a little bit of the paper off. I shouldn't put it on a wet paper towel. That'll make a mess. I'll do it on the dry part. Okay, and let's see. This is about, yeah, I think that'll be good. So we'll just cut and then take that portion and drop it in the half pan. Look at that. It just fills it so perfectly. I can see why so many people love to do paints this way. And because they have a selection of 50 colors, you could easily fill entire sets of half pans with just these sticks and use them for years. I'm confident that they would last a very long time. So when I do my painting, I'm going to fill each of these half pans with a portion of the sticks so that I'm just working from something that's easy to dip into. And then I'll use a mixing palette, a ceramic palette like this to mix my secondary colors. All right, let's do the yellow next. The paper is really easy to tear. There's no trouble there. Sometimes it can be tricky to just peel a section off, but these seem really easy to peel, which is a big plus. Don't chop your fingers off, Emily. Oh, that one is almost too big. Barely fits in there. You can drop even all the little extra pieces that maybe came off. Just drop them right in there. Makes a little bit of a mess, but you'll notice there's really not a whole lot of waste even when you're cutting these apart. That's the burnt sienna. Truthfully, this is still less messy than filling half pans with tube paints. For those of you who are a little OCD about messes, this might be the perfect solution for you. Yeah, very little waste. Look at this is all the waste that's been produced by all of these that I've cut. And when I was squeezing out tube paints, earlier this week. There was so much that got wasted around the end of the tube. So I'm really liking the economy of this idea. All right, last one, ultramarine. Look how pretty that looks on the inside. You can see just how beautifully pigmented that is. Okay, that's it. Let's throw away the tiny little bit of crumbs we have left over. And you may need to wash your hands, but that's still less messy than when I'm putting tube paint in the pans. 
Yay, okay, so there are all our watercolor sticks placed in pans ready to go. We're gonna start our painting. So I'm gonna just experiment today and just try out some fun effects with lots of water. I also have a spray bottle because I want to see how the paint activates on dry paper. And so we're gonna start with actually just the sticks. I'm not gonna use my little created pans just yet. I'm going to begin with ultramarine. And I'm gonna try to press really hard here and create a nice strong line. Actually, let's do this vertical. Yeah, so we're gonna create a nice strong line. This is gonna represent the water line. I'm gonna try to do some trees and I'm gonna draw those in. We're gonna do some autumn trees, switching now to the yellow and kind of just, this is so fun, just drawing with a watercolor stick. I don't ever get to do this normally. Very different from what I'm used to. So we're essentially kind of pre-mixing our colors on the dry paper, and I just want to see what happens when we add the water over the top. For now, I'm just kind of playing with color, just laying it down. Let's make this more intense yellow. So just using the flat edge of the watercolor stick. All right, well, I know it looks really messy, but let's just see what happens. Okay, so let's take a spray bottle. I'm just gonna try this first and just spray all over our paint. And then I'm gonna take my paper towel and put it underneath and just let some drip happen. Move the water back and forth. All right, so it looks like when we spray it, the marks are kind of staying put. We may need to use the brush to manipulate it a little bit. So this is different from the brusho, for example. Check out that video, by the way, if you want to see what I'm talking about with brusho, which just explodes when you add water. But this doesn't really do that. You have to kind of scrub it, it looks like. And the marks you make pretty much stay there. We're gonna use the brush to manipulate those marks. And I have a feeling that I'm gonna to need to work the paint like I normally do with normal watercolors, which is fine. I just wanted to see what would happen. Okay, so I'm making a watery mess. Let's let that drip down. All right, so now's our chance to experiment with dipping directly out of the palette with our little pans here that we've created. So let's take some red. Oh yeah, and that actually just behaves much more like how I would expect watercolor to behave. When I'm dipping into the palette paint, just scraping my brush, my wet brush on the side of each of these, activating the paint, and there we're getting a much better blend of color. Let's see what happens when we take our Sodalite Genuine and draw directly into the water. Oh yeah, that looks so much more clean than when we did it on the dry paper. So I think the drawing effect might actually work best on pre-wet paper because it's reactivating the paint on the stick, just making it easier to release. All right, so I created this rather messy fall scene using just these five colors, and I'm amazed at the different mixes that I can get from these colors. Not surprised, Daniel Smith just really comes out with great products. Also, I added the Ultramarine and the Burnt Sienna to my Schmincke palette because as you can see, I use those two colors all the time. So I thought an additional color on there might help. And to my Sennelier palette, I added my Nickel Azo Yellow and the Sodalite Genuine. Still need to find a place to put my organic vermilion, but I'm confident I'll find a place for it. So I highly recommend these watercolor sticks if you're looking for a cheaper option than tubes, but something that'll last many years, something you can put in pans and buy tons of colors. I think this is a great, great product, and I can't wait to buy some more colors and play some more with these in my palettes. Thanks for watching my review on Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. Check out these other watercolor supply videos, and I'll see you over there. Watercolor sticks.